Hello, hello everyone. finished the round robin that was started yesterday. It went a little longer than I anticipated. And I unfortunately had to cut things short. I feel really bad about it. But just for a quick rundown and recap for those who for those who did not see where we're standing, this is what we're currently looking at. It's a nine round, uh, round robin tournament. So all of these starter decks, uh, 11 to 20 are going, or not starter decks, structure decks, are going to be facing off against each other. And yeah, <laughs> we're, we're gonna see how it finishes up. I'm, I'm hoping spellcasters can kinda dig themselves out of the dirt. I, uh, it was brought to my attention, I made a little bit of a mistake on the deck list because Breaker was limited at the time I made this deck, and, uh, well, it really hasn't helped out that, uh, the deck has been running more than one Breaker, at least not less. So, we'll, uh, we'll let everything finish up. We'll be starting off the round with Surge of Radiance versus Merrick. wired in. I literally just started. Okay, cool. So this is the, the first round and whatnot. How many duels are left? Is it just it's two? It's two rounds, so quite a few, quite a few oh, okay. duels are left. I might not be able to be here for the full thing, depending on how long how long they go, but we'll see. Yeah.
Merrick's deck is has been doing pretty well. Neo Parshath dropping onto the field. It's not going to be able to stick around very long. <laughs> kind of a short sighted play to throw out your ace when it's not going to have its effect, but... It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't look like do. Surge has much of a choice at this point. No. I think they're just dead. Oh, Swords of Revealing Light reveals the truth! Uh, I will run a sudden death duel if there is a tie for first. Uh, but I believe also the bracket will order things depending on, like, who bested who. So I usually will say, well, based on, like, who they were able to beat, if you want to look at it that way, here's who won, or if you want to say the tiebreaker thing, then you can do that. Creature swap trading away the new Doria. Kind of a mistake, in my opinion. Actually, no, it should trigger when Merrick blows it up, I think. I guess we'll find out in a second. Oh yeah, Merrick gets never mind. Yeah, complete complete misplay. But oh, for Merrick it wasn't. It he it allowed him to blow it up and get the other monster. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's gonna be round one to Merrick. <laughs> oh yeah, because Surge Radiance doesn't have creature swap, no, does it? No, it doesn't. They sure would benefit from it. With how many oh, it really it would, yeah. Heavy storm at the start. Yeah, ooh, and a nobleman. Surge of Radiance just starting off by clearing all of Merrick's field. And they're gonna get a clean hit in for 1400. Parshath will hit the field with the Cestus. Nope. Hey, Dragon Master. Glad you can make it to this part.
Parshath going to get bounced back by Gravekeeper's Guard. It's rough. It is rough, but Gelen Duo is here, which is going to be very difficult to out while Sanctuary in the Sky is still on the field. Going to use Descendant to clear away the Gelen Duo. No monsters for Surge of Radiance. This is going to be a bit of a problem for them. Another bricked hand. Surge of Radiance is going to hang on by five... No, sorry. 800 life points. And they're gonna blow up Sanctuary in the sky too, which is uh, pretty big because that does limit the options of Surge of Radiance, so of course they replace it immediately with a new one. And the negate yeah, attack is destroyed! And Merrick BMing the final Sanctuary of the Sky before punching for game. That is going to be a win for Merrick. Merrick will continue to stay at the top. Pizza delivery Merrick has sold you on the deck. <laughs> well. It's, it's been, been doing, doing well. well. Alright, Machina Mayhem versus Dragoon of the Legion. Machina Mayhem starting off with a fortress on the field. Ducks confidently thrown out into attack mode. One has to wonder, is there a face down? Yep, Icarus attack. A Machina Fortress is still added from the deck. Is a new one going to be summoned to take its place? Yes. Hunter Owl confidently thrown out into attack mode. Is that another Icarus attack waiting on the field? Yes, it is. Hilarious. And Dr uh, Machina Mayhem is forced to resort to swords. The double Icarus attack, absolutely too strong for them right now. Mistletane hits the field with an Atlas equipped. Soldier confidently thrown out into attack mode. Locking a fortress brought to the hand. The swords are up. Solidarity is going to be played. Machina will clear the Dragoonities off the board. Setting Machina Fortress for some unknown reason? It's the mind games. Ducks could have punched over it. That's honestly hilarious. The AI has psyched out the other AI. I never thought I'd see the day.
Dragoon and the Legionnaire going to go for Machina Fortress. Aklas is going to target the Metal Morph that's face down. Mage Power being equipped to Legionnaire, making it a 2200. Machina in some trouble here. Cyber Valley is thrown out. That'll help stall a turn. Cyber Valley will remove itself and draw a card. Machina Soldier thrown out. Going to walk right into a Mirror Force. Oh. Ducks pulls out Naklas. Yep, That's goodbye. gonna be game one. What am I doing? Why is Merrick here? You already had your round. Oh, I think Brandestock is absolutely really good. I don't necessarily think it's better, but I think it's of at least equal value because uh, Atlas being able to blow up two cards uh, like with Legionnaire has been very, very potent. But Brandestock will just cause duels to end really quick. Yeah, Dragoonity came back and won Dogma, yep. Uh, Dragoonity's pitch an Atlas for an Atlas. Not, not really sure the wisdom behind that move, but who knows? They had another Aklas in their hand too. Machina Fortress is back out already. Yeah, Aklas will trigger a monster destruction and then a freestyle destruction with Aklas. Atlas. Yeah, we'll see it right here. So it'll Legionnaire's effect will pop mocking a fortress. And then Atlas's effect will trigger, and then they can pop a back row. It's very, very potent. You actually kinda of wanna just let that get popped at that point. Uh you... yeah, because that means they can just resummon Legionnaire. And double and, pop again. And destroy swords. Uh, yeah. They can't necessarily destroy swords. They do need at least a monster to be out on the field for a Legionnaire to target something. Uh, okay. And they decided to just pitch Legionnaire. Uh, Brandestock is going to get thrown onto the field in defense mode and then run over by a Cyber Dragon. Okay. Sometimes the AI doesn't think about, you know. <laughs> Ooh, Icarus oh, okay. attack going to oh, get really? rid of the Cyber Dragon. I was just gonna say, it gets caught up in the idea of pitching ducks for Brandestock. Uh, definitely a mistake. Because Ducks could have just pulled out one of the brand of stocks in the grave. Yeah. Well, now we have a Ducks. Mm -hmm. 
Duck's gonna go for a Branda stock. A double attacking 2100 is no joke, but it's gonna hit a D prison. Uh, Mage Power Branda stock after the effect. Uh, pretty much, Jared, yes. Uh, this is a round robin, so they aren't eliminated from the tournament. They just play nine rounds, and then at the end we look to see how well they did at the end of the day. Gearframe is going to hit the field, call out a fortress. Hunter Owl will hit the field as a 2000, which is going to force... They might walk into a Hunter Owl block here? No, they did not. Uh. Could have made one, but didn't wanna, I guess. Alright. They're gonna go for a Mistletane. That's gonna grab Branda Stock, which is gonna go back to the grave to grab Levitin. Levitin. That's a Branda Stocked Levitin. Smart choice attacking with the Hunter Owl first. Uh, Merrick has lost two games so far. Not... Dragoonity is not taking Machina Fortress off the field this round. Machina Fortress crashes. Decides to blow up Dragon Ravine instead of... Oh no. Yes. Decides to blow up Dragon Ravine instead of Leviton. <laughs> Compulsory is going to get rid of Leviton. Last Sphere is going to go hidden for 1400. That's going to be it for Dragoonities this time. Round three, Round three hype. hype. So as a quick uh, reference there, Jared, this is what the current score looks like. Uh, we're still working our way through round eight of uh, nine, but this is what the current score of all the, the 10 decks looks like. Not everyone has had their eighth match though, so.
Dragon Lords started out being a lot more, uh... Dragon Lords had such a strong start, I was so happy for them, but then they, they fell off pretty hard as the tournament progressed. Uh, Dragoonity is unfortunately no show on the monsters department. Mirror Force is gonna keep them safe uh, from taking any damage this round. And they summon the Lone Brandis stock with United We Stand. Not the most intimidating monster, especially not when compulsory. Oh, no. <laughs> compulsory is so good against Dragoonity. Like, it's good against basically everything, but. In this era, it's... Uh, I'm gonna go call a misplay on the bottomless trap holder, considering who they should know at this point, who is getting yanked. Yeah. Machina Fortress hits the field. Does Dragoonity have an answer this time? No. I'm gonna guess we're looking at... Probably at least one Icarus attack that's down on the field right now. And now there's two... Oh, alright. The second bottomless trap hole hits a good target this time. All those other face downs, though. Yeah. <laughs> Draw a card. Foolish burial, they'll send Leviton. And now it is top deck time. Well, there it is gonna be really rough. Thankfully, there's a lot of destruction effects that they Dux can deal with. Dux is going with, to hit the but, uh, field, but because it's not a normal summon, yep. yep. There's there the Icarus attack. Dragon Ravine will hit the field. This will give Dragoonities their wonderful control. Ditches Legionnaire for Axlis. Small right. Dragon Beatdown is online. You don't have to use the the, the Ravine every time. Uh, heavy Mech Support Platform confidently thrown out in attack mode for some reason. Atlas thrown for Atlas. Tiny Dragon Beatdown continues. All right. That's why. Best. Was, that's why I was confidently in attack Best use of shrink. Cyber dragon top deck by Zane. Classic. Uh, ditches a missile tane for Legionnaire, which. Uh, Legionnaire is kind of needed at this moment. They're gonna pick Brandistock to blow up the Cyber Dragon and keep punching into Machina. I'm sorry, Dragon Master. I don't know what their obsession is with Small Dragon Beatdown. I didn't tell them to do it, I swear. There's a running theory that Merrick is just shadow gaming people to be dumb. Uh, Compulsory on Legionnaire, not the greatest move. It does mean he's gonna get an equip back. And he's gonna go for Brandistock, which means Leviton is here. A Brandistock Leviton. Uh, which is game. Dragoon and these are gonna take it. The Greenies are pretty cool. Look, their boss monster is a dragon with a sword. All right, Dragoonities is gonna take that one. Next is going to be Curse of Darkness versus Warrior Strike. It's 
see if Curse of Darkness feels like showing up. Sometimes it really doesn't. Sometimes it really doesn't, that is true. Marauding Captain starting off, summoning out a future Samurai. Equipped with a Phoenix Blade, equipped with a Ribbon of Rebirth. We're throwing a lot of stock into this Samurai. They're gonna lose their Phoenix Blade. It was a Mystic Tomato Tomato all will get along. stuff for... to bring out another Tomato. Hi, Orc. Kunai with Chain. Hi, Orc. Going to switch the Marauding Captain's uh, attacker into defense mode. Deck Dev is going to come out. Uh, Marauding Captain, since he is holding a chain, is luckily now immune to that disease. But Blazewing Butterfly was not so lucky. Rotting Captain is also going to enjoy cutting up some tomatoes. Are we gonna see a legendary feat? Nope, it's their other favorite, Plague Wolf. Curse doesn't have legendary feet. Oh Which right. It's weird. It is weird, but it's Merrick instead. Malice is here! Plague Wolf is going to double its attack to punch over. Birthright's going to be used Blazing to call butterfly. Future Samurai going to destroy the Malice Doll of Demise, and they're going to get in for a clean 3100. Don't joke about legendary fiend Myron. It's it, it's won some duels, man. It's the one that at least <laughs> won the Viking like, Ring. It, it it helps, yeah. It helps win like one duel. Yeah. Axe Dragonoot going to take out the Blazewing Butterfly. Mm. Future Samurai is going to immediately destroy Axe Dragonoot to punch for a game. Needed Dark Necrofear for Darkness within Darkness. Yeah, agreed. Here we go. Grab myself a drink real quick. 
Starting off with the reinforcement of the army for a marauding captain, which we are going to use to summon marauding captain using its effect to bring out a second marauding captain. We are starting with a marauding captain lock and burden of the mighty. So that's going to be a pretty strong opening. Hi, Orc. Equipped with a sword. It's got an axe and a sword. Couldn't attack, though. We got a, a Vicita Chevalier, who's supervised you know, by Orc. I get back, and Orc has just been memed into the ground, and then stole Oh, hi, Orc. That's gonna hurt really bad. Curse of Darkness already at 3400. Heavy Storm. Still has to deal with that Marine Captain Lock, though. Despite all their rage, they're still just a rat in a nightmare steel cage. Always. Constantly in that cage. Alright. That weaker Swords of Revealing Light is, is gone. We got the Mystic Tomato. It's a Mega Tomato! It, it still can't attack. Oh, wait, okay, can it take yeah. the face down? That's right. But it can't kill the face down. And Mask of Darkness brings back the dankest of traps, <laughs> nothing, and summons Diablos King of the Abyss. Now, Curse of Darkness. He allows him to draw that card. It... Oh, Navigator Shifter's back. And summoned. And second summoned. Burden of the Mighty. Uh, Alright, we'll see if he allows him to draw the card that he gets. Yes. In his infinite wisdom, he thinks that this face down is perfectly fine. This marauding lock is just doing- nope, not allowing him to draw that one. Ends up being another face down. Top of the deck, alright. Infinite Wisdom. This card was okay. Okay, he doesn't play it. This is very exciting. Bottom of the deck. We, we didn't like that one. Glad glad the channel is doing something for you there, Jared. Tomato is back. They're gonna go get rid of Gemini Summoner. Only to get Sakura. Except dude. they aren't. That's really funny. Instantly, that that puts them on the back foot again. Eradicator epidemic destroyed. Mr. Tomatoes gonna summon Plague Wolf. Gemini Summoner will kill Plague Wolf. Running Captain Kunai with Chain. <laughs> Can't be stopped. Curse of Darkness only has 500 life points left. Can they do something? Well. Ooh, dimensional. <laughs> they decided to. They decided to not. Oh, hi, Orc. Um, Getting in for 300 right. damage just to say, no, you didn't perfect me. I don't like you. Shut up. <laughs> That's going to be Warrior Strike taking this one. Uh, this won't matter. He's going to get Dark Bribed anyway. Well, that's, that's just a flex. That's just point. childish. 2-0 for Warrior Strike.
All right, Matt. <laughs> no surprises there, really. All right, next up we got Dragon Lords vs. Spellcasters Command. The <laughs> two decks at the very bottom of the tournament. Hey, Ultra Flash. How's it going? Curse of Darkness. Curse of Darkness is... Is yeah. weird. It's weird. And not good weird. Dragon Lord's opening up with a defensive opener. Citadel of Endemion is coming out fast. Already, that's going to be four counters. That's going to be, uh... Ooh, didn't, didn't put it on the Exemplar. We're looking at six spell counters already. Uh, that's gonna eat Soccer Retsu, Endemion Citadel will pick up all those loose spell counters, and Endemion's just gonna hit the field immediately, and is going to retrieve a spell power grasp. Endemion's gonna look to keep the pressure up. Pitching a card to blow up the Flame Ruler. This is gonna allow for a clean 2700. Demion swings in again for 27. Dragon Lords cannot take another hit. They absolutely must summon something. Iron Dragon? No? No. Okay. Well. Crystal Seer allows UV to pick its well. next straw. He's gonna go with Giant Trunade. Which doesn't really help anything. Because it won't it won't blow up. Okay. Uh Yuki goes in for spellcasters to take round That's... one. Ouch. No, I need more counters. Storm Reaper. Hey, Reaper. Which tag force is this? Arc V? Yeah. Yeah. That's the that's the game that's being played. As far as the decks, uh, if the, if you're asking about the decks, uh, it is Spellcasters Command versus uh, Rise of the Dragon Lords right now. Hmm. 
Mm. Uh, wow. Yugi has decided to make the strongest... Strongest defender of all time. Ah, oh, you're very welcome, Phantom. And yeah, I don't, I don't need a giant number in the stream to... Oh, Snipe Hunter getting, getting a case of bad luck there. Snipe Hunter is going to pitch another card. Three cards for the cost of one defender. Uh, we'll see if it was worth it in the end. Uh, yeah, the best AI, they're all actually the same AI. Uh, the characters don't have different AI. If you give them the same decks, they will perform the same way. The game has been programmed to utilize certain cards together. Um, but because of how, like, think of how complicated it would be to just get one AI to understand how to play the game. And, like, they have certain decks that like, they know certain cards are supposed to work together or work in certain ways. Like, when you compare the AI here to the Edo Pro AI, this AI actually has a lot going for it. Um, it is it is smart in ways that, that like, Edo Pro's is not. Edo Pro will just fire off any effect it can activate. And even if it's to its detriment, like, it'll, It'll just destroy itself. Like, if you had, like, Merrick play his Gravekeepers and Gravekeeper's Descendant was on the field with two other Gravekeepers, he would tribute a Grave... And, and his opponent had no monsters. Because he can activate it, the effect, Edo Pro will tribute one of those Gravekeepers to then blow up his other Gravekeeper. Because it's an effect it can't activate. The AI in this game, even though it still is flawed, it actually understands a whole lot, all things considered. It, it's 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 actually impressive, even if it does mean that we're still looking at some really bad plays sometimes. There's a lot in this game to consider. There's a lot of factors, and there's just some pieces of programming that the AI is. Why did they do this? They needed that extra hundred. Crystal damage. Seer attack mode beatdown. You could have gotten the flip effect first, but I guess that wasn't worth it. <laughs> Yugi's over here like, this 100 damage will mean everything. Dragon Lord's down to 1300. One more hit from the Super Breaker will... What, what are All we right. doing here, man? Just flexing. Weird, weird flexing. The face down draining shield is destroyed. That's going to spell the end for Dragon Lords. Spellcaster's command is victorious. Next is going to be Dark Emperor versus Zombie World. And yeah, the the AI actually will pull. It, it'll pull some really big brain plays, and then it will do something really yep. stupid. It, it uh, it's not consistent. Yeah, but... it, it's like, and you'll notice these mistakes happen with the same cards, no matter who is playing the deck. Because I don't, I don't pick certain characters to play certain decks. And if you see me pick a character specifically, it's just for the aesthetic of saying, "Oh, look, it's warriors. Joey's playing warriors. Sure." But uh, it doesn't actually like change how they play. Uh, you'll see that like no matter who is piloting Dragoonities, they will like they will throw Atlas to the grave to get Atlas, uh, even though that like won't help them. But you'll see all the characters do it no matter what. So it is just one AI. It's just it depends on how they program the cards. Former tech, tech first games had really, really bad AI for certain decks, like good old Underworld Zane, always setting his cyber darks. <laughs> Kaiba, I, I have Kaiba diss on these tournaments because they're AI tournaments. 
That or I say they, they were done by other duelists, but like, you know... It, either way, Kaiba would just be like, well, I didn't pilot the decks. It was probably some third-rate duelist. Probably didn't know what they were doing. DD Assailant is going to be taken with Marionette Might and tributed for a Red Eye Zombie Dragon. D Fissure is going to be used. This is going to turn off Zombie Dragon's effect. But that's not going to stop Zombie World for getting in on Dark Emperor for some pretty chunky damage. Patrician of Darkness is out. DD Scout Plane is going... Bad call? Uh Really. Haiku is getting removed. Charizard or Dragonite? Um, I think Charizard's the closest thing to having, like, blue eyes energy. Patrician going to redirect. Spell Shattering Arrow is going to hit. Caius is going to get removed. A thousand damage is going to be done. That's going to leave... That's going to leave Dark Emperor in a very awkward spot. DD Survivor is going to be stolen by Zombie World. Zombie World takes round one against Dark Emperor. Dark Emperor slipping. Imperial Iron Wall immediately is going to severely mess with Dark Emperor. Not only that, but we we're also dealing with a uh, zombie world start with Imperial yeah, Iron Wall. Yeah, this is a very strong start. So they're, they're, entire, they're entirely turned on, and uh, a good portion of, of Emperor is turned off. Yatsufuma left in defense mode. AI being wary of a potential mirror force by the looks of it. Zombie dragon going in for Bazoo. Um. That's, that's wow. gonna bring... Dark Emperor is absurdly low right now. Or sorry, did I say Zombie World? Dark Emperor. 
absurdly yeah. low right now. DD Survivor is going to try and salvage something. Honestly, this this does nothing for them. Yeah, they're they're dead. That was just a defiant last attack. Wow. Zombie Dragon is gonna steal DD Survivor again. And Red Eye Zombie Dragon and Zombie World will defeat Dark Emperor. Very convincing. Very, very convincing. Against Dark yeah. Emperor. All right, that brings us to the end of round two. Or sorry, not round two. Round round eight. <laughs> Pretty close to round two, and you think about uh, it. These are our standings right now. Merrick now has a definitive lead. Dark Emperor has lost that definitive lead. It is possible for Dragoon Beat Legion and Dark Emperor to tie for first if Merrick loses his final duel. Uh, but Merrick's final duel is against Curse of Darkness. So Merrick, in my opinion, just pretty much has a free win going here. And yet, we have we have seen Curse of Darkness win before, so... Curse of Darkness knows? does have two wins under the belt. Spellcasters and Rise of the Dragon Lords still both in a rough spot. Uh, much, a lot of the decks have maintained a 50% win rate. Honestly, this tournament's been pretty, pretty entertaining. In, in my opinion, when it comes to who is winning and who is losing. The fact that our bottom tier deck has had two wins is a lot better than the previous tournaments where, you know, we had zero and nine. Yeah, and the top deck isn't abs absolutely undefeatable. The top deck is like... not completely running away with it. All right. So let's get on with the final round. We're going to be starting with Surge of Radiance versus Dragoon of the Legion. Surge of Radiance was in the running for a top spot earlier in the tournament. It has since fallen from that down to a 50% win ratio, but... Strong start. Could be close. Uh, Hunter Owl getting hit with the old man immediately. Wait. What? Heavy Storm just for Ravine? <laughs> Surge with some very interesting plays. Perhaps they're just trying to king make to get Dragoonity Legion the W. So they have a chance at taking the top spot from Merrick. Yeah, that's a nice sentiment, hey, but, uh, probably not. Uh, Neoparshath heading the field. Its effect is not going to be online right away. I think I would have crashed a Nova Summoner for a second Parshath. Yeah. Yeah. Just gotta get that draw power. Going to pitch an Atlas. That is going to be responsible for destroying both monsters.
At least we don't have anything super obnoxious like a marshmallow on the sanctuary. Negate attack going to keep fairies around a little bit longer. Good job, Sanctuary. Don't know what you were going for, but it didn't work. Sanctuary, Surge of Radiance employing the strategy of all time. Well, glad to have you here what? so you can enjoy some of these tournaments. What, what even are these character designs? <laughs> Tron? Like, what are... I, I, what I is don't, that? I don't know off the top of my head where Tron is from. I know, I know it's one of the later Please. series, but I have no idea what Tron's deal is. I, I legitimately thought it was a filler, like, villain character they added to Tag Force <laughs> or something. That's... Uh, to my knowledge, it's a it's a character that's that's in one of the later series and not a filler villain. Because they don't have okay, darts, I, I... and if they don't have darts, then, like... Yeah. Dragmaster says it's a Zexal design. That, that tracks. Uh, pretty much Jared, um... That's, that's why they wanted to get rid of Pot of Green, just it was too good. Oh, here comes the Super Legionnaire! Lightning Vortex is going to get rid of the Super Legionnaire. The small dragon beatdown is online. Bottomless <laughs> trap hole does Parshath in. Pitches Atlas for Brandistock. I, I really want to know how they program the AI with the Dragoonities because, like, they just do not make moves that make sense to me. Like, see, that makes sense. Pitching Brand of Stock to the grave for someone that can pull it from the grave. Yeah. So many times it'll just pitch a tuner for a tuner. Double attacking ducks going to get walled by a negate attack. I don't know that Surge has an out of- oh, wait, may stand corrected. Never mind. Yeah. Pitches United, we stand for another duck. I want to guarantee that they're holding a tuner in their hand that they should have just- ooh! Double ducks with double attack? This is a... Against an open field, this is an OTK right here. And this is going to spell the end of, uh, Surge of Radiance. Jerry Beans, 
All right, here we go. It's Merrick's final duel of the tournament. I also. Come on, curse. Show me what you got. Show me what It'll you can do. It'll be really silly if Merrick loses to curse. Like, it's not impossible, but god will it be silly. Spirit Reaper is going to wall off Merrick's initial attack. Nightmare Steel Cage going to block. Okay, but are we setting anything up? That might up? be a stealth no? bird this All right. It might be. Or actually, it no. doesn't. Yeah, it's a tomato and a wolf. Mer uh, Curse of Darkness may go for the ram. Yep, Plague Wolf is going to go take out Assailant. Or, no, it's going to be Diablos. Guard is going to say goodbye to Diablos. Well, you did your best. I won't say that your best was good. But you did your best. The tomato is attacked. For another tomato. The other tomato is run over. For yet another tomato. Should have just run New Dory into it. Honestly, there's no reason not to. Or it hits the field and runs into Nightmare Wheel. And Mirror Force. That's just a waste. Ha, you fool! You've I run mean, into it, my Nightmare Mirror Force! It's, it's, it'll burn him, I guess. There's, there's, it's got that going for it. I I don't I don't think it actually fires if there's no target. Hmm. Yep. There, it fires during standby phases, so it has not fired yet. So it's, it's just, just sitting, sitting there, there. Merrick hanging just out, like... taking up space, rent free. Um, yeah, alright, I... Then the same thing was achieved if you had just crashed. Tribute for Gravekeeper's Visionary at 3,300. America's going to punch in for round one. Merrick needs to be stopped. The fate of the world depends on it. You hear that, Curse of Darkness? Curse of Darkness, you, you gotta, you gotta come back. Oh, it, it's okay. It's, I like it's you. Titan piloting Curse of Darkness now. Oh, perfect. He'll know how to wield the deck. Uh, Maria, I believe the answer you're looking for is Ashley. I've heard she she could uh, she could rule the world and still finish all our homework. Merrick starting off with Dark Room of Nightmare. 
Going to eat a heavy storm. Heavy storm. Book of Moon lost. That's gonna hurt a little bit. That's a Sword of Dark Rites Malice Doll of Demise. Which is going to <laughs> immediately <laughs> die. And then Ecto <laughs> that's sad. I cry every time. Nightmare Steel Cage. Stealth Bird going to strike in for 1,000 damage. Axe Dragonute hits a spy. Stealth Bird flips back down. Goodbye, Spy. Can Curse of Darkness really go the distance with Stealth Bird and Ectoplasmer? setting. That, that was a visionary set, I think. Oh no, it, it was legendary, legendary theme. theme. That's that, actually even more confusing. Which is Stealth Bird is really chipping away at Merrick here. Oh Deck no. Devastation is going to hit Merrick. That's actually going to be a problem for him. The stealth bird. That was the win con. Most of his monsters are 1500 or lower. Only a few beat that that virus. And here comes Spirit Reaper to get rid of his creature swap. And get tributed. Bye bye. Mystic Tomato destroyed by the deck. Goodbye. Mystic Tomato destroyed and by deck dev again. It's Groundhog Day again. Oh, the win con. Curse wow. of Darkness might take a round off of Merrick. If he does not draw a monster, he's dead on the next turn. Oh. Uh, he's still dead. He's, he's still, still dead. dead. Wham. Ectoplasma brings back... Alright, well, really, Malice brings itself back. And... Alright, that's wham. one round for Curse of Darkness. <laughs> AI and Ectoplasma, the ship lives on. It sure does. It's the greatest love story ever told in a children's card game. Yeah, that deck dev absolutely devastated. Yeah, it's like it worked as intended. Here we'll have we'll have Titan still pilot Curse of Darkness for the final <laughs> round. Yeah, clearly Titan knows how clearly. that deck works. Threat from Hell. Look at that deck name. Fear from hell, darkness, darkness from hell. Darkness from hell. There's the proof right there. That's, That's how, he, how knows. he knows. He's got the darkness from hell. I bet he has a chance of ruling the world and still finishing all his homework. Maybe. <laughs> we'll see. Dark room of nightmare hits. So does Spear Soldier. 
punches into a tomato. Do you think the darkness is your ally? Spear soldier. And the tomato is going to hit squarely as well. Plague Wolf will destroy itself. Darkness from the home for infinite losers. Assailant is going to hit in to another tomato. To bring out another tomato. We, we love those Titan tomatoes. Looking to keep the field stocked. Malice all of demise and tomato getting in. Mystical Space Typhoon used against Dimension Wall, which is pretty big for Merrick right now because he is hurting. Yeah. Merrick is going to throw down a steel oh. cage. Where's our ectoplasm? It's it's got to be coming. It's got to be right around the corner. Hi, hi orc. Hi orc. This guy in mystical space typhoon. Merrick with quite the back row. Um. <laughs> Never, never mind. Oh, it's the bird. Orc is going to punch out the Gravekeeper's guard. Ah, uh, bad. Why would you bounce bad Orc? Bad return target. Nudoria is going to get hit. And sure. A bad choice. Not what I would pick. Probably should have hit Tomato. Gotta love that commentator's curse. Yeah. Um. Does Merrick have an answer in any one of those back rows? Nah, that bird is too stealthy. Nightmare Wheel is an answer. Metal Reflex Slime's also yep. an answer, but Merrick has to kill that stealth bird in two turns or he is dead. Yeah. Orc actually gets to stick around. Oh. Uh, he is. Oh. He is. Oh. He is still alive. Oh. Oh no! Yeah, Luckily, only, Ma oh, Merrick's okay, okay, ace okay, saves okay. him. Wow. Um, is this this is this is the way to get rid of uh, the stealth bird, but problem with that is long nope. Kidding me. That is You're hilarious. Joking. Titan's too good. Curse Merrick, of Darkness had no defeats answers. the number one deck. The, the 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 yeah. What was this? Like when Blaze of Destruction it's defeated like effectively legendary. It's like the same or, thing. Like Merrick was the yeah. top of the chain, and then the bottom tier deck managed to win because anything can fucking happen in AI duels. Oh my god. Hey, hey, Matt. Send me the deck list you want me to run, cause I, I could actually, I could actually test that fairly quick.
I use 11 lands, Empire. Machina Fortress running into a Sakuretsu immediately, Swords of Revealing Light played in retaliation. Destruction used. It's gonna net them another Machina Fortress. They will run over. Never mind. They will attempt to run over the Mass Dragon, but to no avail. Draining Shield has been banned. And I think they actually do they, run they more do. than so once, that, so... That, that is a hit. Commentary that morphing jar is going to help out Zane quite a bit, actually. And running into the Cyber Valley. We, we just really want him to have a hand, I guess. So, I'm going to give him one. We're setting Dragon Ravine. Not sure what that's about. And destruction comes out. Double solidarity is going to be really dangerous. Um, like an armored unit. <laughs> 3,400 gear frame. Oh boy. Uh, we got two 4,100 Machina Fortresses. That's a 2,000 damage punch to the face. That's a 3,400 damage punch to the face. And... Twin-Headed Behemoth, our favorite card of all time, sent to the graveyard. It's back. Call of the Haunted comes out for Snipe Hunter. Activating effect to destroy one solidarity. That's a hit. Activating the effect again for the other solidarity. That is a hit. And activating the effect again on one of the Machina Fortresses. Uh, that ends up throwing... Okay, well... I am back. Welcome back. Uh, you'll notice that, that uh, Dragoonity is set Dragon Ravine. Uh, so that's oh, the Dragon Lord, yeah. a strategy. Yeah, oh yeah, Dragon Lords. They set Mausoleum. <laughs> for some reason. Um, <laughs> don't know what that's about. Um... They had Felgrind in their hand, but they decided to throw it away. Uh, Snipe Hunter put in a lot of work. There was a double solidarity that they were dealing with, which is like super deadly. Yeah. Draining Shield really put in some work for them to uh, not get instant killed, but they, they still 
are hanging on by, an, uh, by a thread. Well, got rid of the shrink. Um, pretty sure this is the end of the line, though. Oh, do they have a Spear Crete install going? Yeah. Mausoleum is entirely worthless, because they have 600 <laughs> life points and... Yeah, the good old Spear Crete and Law. Is this going to end with a This with might a end deck with end? a deck out, yeah. And that that doesn't help no. Dragon Lords. Obviously. Um, Nobleman would be useful in this situation, but uh It's it's looking like this is going to end with a deck out, which is a really unsatisfying <laughs> way for this to go. No one's really using mill strategies. Forced to ditch a card. Oh boy, this is thrilling. Dust tornado. It's shrink. Uh, okay. <laughs> the other deck is like, oh god, another monster, thank god. Oh wow, solidarity map magic jammer. Wow, okay, I mean. Cool. Nothing else to be done. Uh, so Jared, oh, <laughs> what is happening right now is there is something called a Spear Cretan lock. Spear Cretan is a monster that, when flipped up, you can summon one monster from the graveyard in face—I I believe it's face-up attack or face-down defense position. That's correct. So, as it has done yeah, now. Yeah. So it is. It is going to continuously revive an, its other Spear Cretan in defense mode. Meaning, while uh, Machina Mayhem can fill the field here with monsters, they can't actually do any damage against the Spear Cretan. But it, it's just not going to matter. It's just not going to matter because uh, <laughs> Dragon Lords are going to deck out before they can kill. Yeah. Thrilling. Thrilling stuff. Hello, Brandon. <laughs> That'll go to my Forty seven turns.
All right, here we go. Dragon Lords going up against Machina round two. We got a solidarity start. Yeah, that's the first deck out of the tournament, Dragon Master. That is true. Uh, wow. Machina's really trying to go in for the kill here. Their whole hand has been discarded. But they still have a 3300 out on the field. And Dragon Lords is not on the board. Heavy mech support going to equip itself to Machina Fortress to make it even more indestructible. And that was a good call because Vortex hits right after. Dust Tornado Strikes Solidarity. That, that may have been a bad hit because I don't... That doesn't make the, the kill difference. Dragon Lords summoning Tyrant Dragon here as their last ditch effort, but... Tyrant Dragon can only just kill Machina Fortress and get taken out with it. Prohibition on Tyrant Dragon. No more Tyrant Dragons. Uh, Blaze of Destruction is not so, in this tournament, so Jared. Any playable monster. Solidarity is back. Uh, okay, but we need something with 200 or more attack that's playable. Oh, there's Machina Fortress. It's back. That counts, yep. Ooh, Draining Shield puts wow. them back in the duel. But for how long? They still can't play their Tyrant Dra Oh, that could be game. Yep, that is almost certainly game, unless that face Another down Another trading is... shield. Ah! Yep. Haha! -ha. Why do I talk? Dragon Lords is still in this. But maybe not anymore. Okay. <laughs> Guess what? Till in it. Twin Edit Behemoth is back. Will it make the difference? I don't think so. I think they're just on the back foot until this is over. Dragon Lords are refusing to die. But it's it is dead though. I'm I'm certain of it. And that's yeah. gonna be it. Machina Mayhem takes it clean. Dark Emperor is going to go up against Warrior's Strike.
Ooh, Dark Emperor starting with no monsters, but same for also Warrior Strike. Direct attack by Banisher of Radiance. That, that burden putting in some Bottomless work. trap hole taken out. Big hit. Torrential tribute on the Blazewing Butterfly. With, without a without backup plan, a backup mind plan. you. Chevalier is going to blow up the Sakuretsu armor. Another good hit. And is going to strike in for 1900. Vortex is going to be used by Dark Emperor. I ditched the Macro Cosmos too. Dark Emperor is still in trouble right now. They are going to use DD Warrior Lady to out out the samurai. Warrior strike, no monster this time. Same with Dark Emperor. Double Burden of the Mighty is now in play. Hooray. We get to slow this duel down even more. DD Survivor is now only a 1,000 monster, but Big Bang Shot's gonna make it a 1,400. It's a glorified Celtic Guardian now. Warrior Strike draws Exiled Force. Just chills out for some... Oh, I see. It was a trap. It, it's a big, big brain, brain play. play. Dark Core going to be used on Exiled Force. I, I guess. I mean, you still have board presence. Card Trooper is going to come in and just take out DD Survivor. DD Scout Plane is here. Ooh, bad, bad for warriors. Oh, we're... T warriors need to draw a monster. And they do. A big bang butterfly. Gonna hit in for... What was it, night? No, no, it wasn't 1900. It was, uh... It was 1300. Setting into defense mode is a bit of a mistake right now with this butterfly powered up by Big Bang Shot. Enemy controller is going to switch the butterfly into defense mode. Phoenix Gearfried is going to hit the field, which does take away the win con. Yeah. Big Bang Shot would have sealed the deal for them. Supervise is not actually doing anything in this situation. Um, wow.
Joey is going to hang on by a thread. Does he top deck a monster? He does. And he's going to ensure another monster comes. Both so low. There's nothing to be gained by doing this. You're you're gaining zero ground. Exiled Forest is going to remove Field Commander Raz, but they still can't punch over the DD Warrior Lady. Rhoda will be used for an Evercator Chevalier. We're getting rid of the survivors so that they can survive. If he just draws another Caius, it's over. If he blows up the, uh... Nope. If he had decided to blow up the, the dimensional fissure, this would have fixed everything for him. Yeah. But he didn't. Turn from the different dimension used, Joey's dropped down to 100. This is hilarious. Well, it really doesn't help your situation at he all. Can't but... be Dark Cord, because Free does negate spell cards that target him. But the problem is still, like, as soon as Emperor draws another Caius, it's over. Yep. Joey tragically threw when he ditched that Big Bang shot. Yeah. Also threw by not destroying Dimensional Fissure when it was possible to. Karma cut, but Blazewing Butterfly is still too difficult to punch over. Yep. Wow. Wow. It's gonna be around for Dark Emperor. My god, was that a duel. <laughs> that was, uh... That was a war. Jaden randomly becomes evil. Me too. Man, I hate randomly turning evil.
And as uh, ironic as it gets, Joey starts off with a big bang shot on Evocate the Chevalier. And a burden of the mighty. They'll opt for the thousand damage just to take out the Chevalier, not the worst pick. The thing can get pretty mean. Card Trooper going to use its effect to pitch some stuff to the grave. Punch in for 1900. Um, what is this for Caius? No. No, this is because. Okay. You can't use Card Trooper. I used Card Trooper. Jaden says. Now he's removing it from the game. Burden of the Mighty being taken out. Caius hits the field. Removes Gemini Summoner. That's going to be a big problem for Warriors. Tributes Caius for Caius. If he tributes um, another Caius for Caius, that'll be really funny. I, I... It'll also it win the also, duel. Oh, well, that's a close second. Uh, or he'll throw. Yeah. Alright. Macrocosmos. <laughs> a little late. Oh. Oh. Rip. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and that's gonna be it. Dark Emperor will take the W. Let's make things awkward because, um,. We have a three-way tie for first right now. Yeah, that is awkward. Breaker hits the field, blows up a back row. Uh, what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to look at who has beaten who. Mm. So many shrinks. What do you mean, huh? Old Vindictive in attack mode. Is that a magical dimension? No. That was a weird... Why did you do that? What? <laughs> Yugi, hello? King of games. Oh, <laughs> Yugi's just like, well, this worked against my... I 
I just threw out Karibo and said, go ahead, attack, and she didn't. Zombie world, zombie dragon. Ah, this this might seal it. This might seal it for zombies here. Oh no, Endemian hits the field. Blows up zombie world. And then immediately gets rid of the zombie dragon. Zombie Dragon is going to come back in defense mode. Yugi really hates Call of the Mummy. for Endemion and put Magical Dimension in his plate because he handed over Breaker and that's going to destroy Endemion. And then Fissure is going to hit. Wow. Endemion is back from the grave. He's going to pull Magical Dimension back. What a sequence of events. Spellcasters reduce zombie world down to 500 life points. They have quite the top deck challenge here. And they're gonna flub it. <laughs> We're going back to the zombie world. Okay. And I'm Okay, dead. I attack directly. I, no, actually, screw your zombie world. I don't want to go back there. I attack directly. Wow, how, how thematic. That's just childish. <laughs> Here we go, final duel of the tournament. Unless Zombie World pulls this one out. In which case, you know. Spell of the Mummy. It's the Zombie Master. With Zombie World. With Getsu Fuma. And old Vindictive. Doesn't bother attacking the old Vindictive for some reason. Yeah. Endemion erects a citadel yep. right next to Zombie World. Or actually in Zombie World.
I think Joey only ever used an enemy's monster once, and that was Kaiba's blue eyes. Kaiba's tributed other people's monsters. And he's taken control of them like a few times. And then we have uh, Yugi with the most OP version of brain control that apparently, like, when they revive from the graveyard, it still works on them. Because Revival Jam shouldn't have kept reviving on Yugi's side of the field, but, uh, it did. But Yugi, like, Monster Reborn, like, Kaiba's blue eyes when he fought the ghost. He, re <laughs> he revived the Black Skull Dragon that Joey used to kill him with it. He used, like, Revival Jam. Old Vindictive Beatdown is online. Twister says no to Call of the Mummy. And the Old Vindictive Beatdown continues. Yugi, what is going on, man? Getsufuma is gone. The zombie world may spin this back. Zombie World takes wow. that round. All right. Never mind. Round three hype. No banishing for spellcasters, which I believe has literally no effect on them. I don't think they have a single card. They might have a Nobleman of Cross out that doesn't work anymore, but I think that's about as bad as it gets for them. Red Eye Zombie Dragon with Zombie World is already out.
Exemplar summons another exemplar. Breaker is going to stay in attack mode as a distraction, I guess? Breaker destroys Breaker. And Exemplar pulled out another zombie dragon. I think spellcasters are cooked. A Tem being defeated with an army of his stolen monsters. That's gonna give the win to Zombie World. And that will bring an end to the turn. So, what have we All right, so uh, all things considered, this tournament was really even. Um, the fact that six three was the the strongest that we got uh, shows, like at least like after the first ten structure decks, the next ten that followed were a lot closer in terms of strength. Uh, Curse of Darkness, Rise of the Dragon Lords, they performed the worst. Surge of Radiance and Warrior Strike were right behind it, and Surge of Radiance for a time was actually in the runnings to take first for a while. Are we gonna sudden death between Dark Emperor and Merrick to see who the true well, is? Well, we'd have to do the Dragon Lords too. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna examine who beat who, and I'm going to... I'm going to see if that can tie break it, and then if a duel needs to happen, I'll, I'll throw one. Okay, I thought the rankings of one, two, three already put into account would be good. The Machina Mayhem and Zombie World. Uh, bring up fourth and fifth, and then Merrick. Dragoon of the Legion and Dark Emperor are all sitting up there. So let's let's take a quick look. Now when Dark Emperor fought Merrick at 1-2-0. I find it funny that Merrick lost to Spellcaster's command. Like, Merrick lost to Dark Emperor and then two of the worst performing decks in the tournament. And then everyone else he beat. Yeah. Everyone else he beat. Uh, and then Merrick would have defeated Dragoonity Legion. Yeah, Merrick defeated Dragoonity Legion in a 2 0. Dragoonity Legion lost to Dark Emperor and Merrick. And then Dark Emperor beat the both of them. Oh, wait, no! Dragoonity Legion beat Dark Emperor. Wait, do we really have a, a rock, paper, scissors thing going where one beat the other, beat the other? I think we do. Yeah. Yeah, because Merrick beat Dragoonity Legion. Dark Emperor got Dragoonity beat Legion. by Dragoonity yeah. Legion. And Dark em Okay, so even if we do it that way, they're yeah. all kind of tied.
Do we do we want to just accept that it's a three-way tie? Let's see. I'm gonna I'm gonna look at this is what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna go down to fourth place and see how all of them did against Machina Mayhem. Since okay. Machina Mayhem was next in the running. Uh, Machina Mayhem lost to Merrick. Machina Mayhem beat Dark Emperor. And then Machina Mayhem lost to Dragoonity Legion. So that actually slices Dark Emperor. Okay. So then it will, like. If we look at how they performed against... Wait, Zombie World is really fifth? I, I think I even talked about it, but yeah, Zombie World is just sitting there at fifth. Well, they're, they're both five yeah. and four. So, yeah. against Zombie World, between Merrick and... Merrick beat them. Merrick beat Zombie World. Did Dragoonity Legion beat Zombie World? Zombie World beat Dragoonity Legion, but Merrick beat Zombie World. Yeah, so if we look at who beat who, then Merrick, Merrick beat the more the higher up decks, more of them than the others did. He also lost to the lower decks. Yeah, he also lost to the two bottom tier decks. It's so. So does that really does that really put him ahead? It's so bizarre. I I love AI. I, I love AI tournaments. Um. Yeah, that's that's so funny to think about. Cause he, yeah, he he it just lost hilarious. against the two the two lowest on the totem pole. Maybe maybe this just shows that Merrick is weak to like anime protagonists in particular, and everyone <laughs> else is just kind of whatever he'll beat. But yeah. That's just so funny to me. It's really a shame the Tag Force didn't implement Trio Duel right? so we could sudden death with one match, but... Oh well. Well, either way, uh, I, I think this tournament was interesting. We could straw poll it. <laughs> <laughs> who do you, Let the people who do you decide. think won? You know, I am curious. I am curious as to who people think won. So let me... Let me put up a straw poll. Uh, I, I will personally say that if I were to look at the results, I, I'd still say Merrick won. Based on beating the upper ones, it, it is funny that of all his losses, most of them were to the lowest tier decks. But then, like, he just beat everybody else. So, uh, it's it's funny. It's funny to me how fittingly oppressive Dark Emperor is when it yeah. wins, because it just shuts down your strategy entirely. All right, all right, everybody. Place your votes here.
chat may be biased, but like that that's okay. If you're if you're looking for who I think won, like if you want some kind of official ruling, based on what I see, I think Merrick won. Um, but I'm also curious to see what other people think. <laughs> we have a just not Merrick option. I, I see a couple of votes in there for Dark Emperor. bust out his fiend machine with a giant katana. That doesn't even it have doesn't a katana. It doesn't even look remotely like a katana. <laughs> it just isn't one. Mark this is complete. The story that Pegasus went with. Yeah, the Shadow Realm sounds way worse than death. It's all right. That is where the stream is going to be ending today. I have some other things I have to join in for, um, but I will be working on the next video. Oh yeah, Dogma, uh, that is eventually gonna happen. Uh, after I get through all the structure decks that are in Tag Force, I am going to have a big giant tournament with all of them going up against each other. And we'll, that will probably take uh, the greater portion of a month to get through, but we're, we're gonna have some giant tournament with all the structure decks and we'll see. I wanna see, what the biggest upset winds up being. Like, I want to see, like, what's the strongest deck Blaze of Destruction takes out of a giant round robin? Or, like, what's the... What's the biggest upset? What's the closest match between, like, all the structure decks? We're, we're, we're gonna see eventually. You are welcome, Dragon. All right, guys, uh, it was fun as usual. Thank you guys for your support. Thank you guys for being cool. Thank you to my, my co-commentator. Thank you for having me. <laughs> I, will, I will see you guys around. Uh, if you're in my Discord, I'll see Peace you there. Out. And uh, yeah, you guys have a great day. Bye now.